Today we're going to talk about the cradle of life, how it is being altered and what we can do about it to help it build itself, to strengthen the cradle of life. And for many of us, we don't really think about that because we're so blinded by and programmed by society. Hey everyone, we're so blinded and programmed by everything and it's time that we really started to focus on the cradle of life. So it is uh, it's incredible. I have some things coming up. And, and for those that don't know, my name is Gary Parent. And I just like to help people find their balance in life. Mentally, physically, spiritually. It, in all realms of, of life. So, I have some very high-tech stuff coming up that uh, I can't wait to show you. So, I think we should get started. There is one thing that is the cradle of all life on earth, and without this one thing, there would be no life on earth. And that, you ready for this high tech? Let me make sure I get up here, okay. That is a cell. And I can see I should have written this backwards, but I didn't. <laughs> so we have a cell. Now what could possibly make that cell be the cradle of life on earth? all life on earth. We need a seed and the second thing we need is a womb. There is nothing on this earth that's alive that doesn't have these two things. There are other things in there but we'll do that in a future video. I want to make sure that we get to know that it is the seed and the womb that helps the cell create life here on earth. It's really important to understand that. That's why I like working with cells. I don't want to, to regenerate the body and energize the body. That is the job of the cells, and we can help them do that. The next thing that we need, seed, cell, well, seed, womb, we need a blueprint. And that blueprint is genes and DNA. Now, science is always talking about, well, you're stuck with the genes you were born with. Well, I find that kind of odd because what's actually happening is, and what is destroying the cradle of life on earth is science. Genes can be altered. We know that. That's, excuse me, that's how we get GMO foods. They alter the genes. They took the gene of a fish and put it in this plant. And they took a gene of a spider and they put it in that plant. And they're splicing different genes with animals. It's crazy. Now, as we get deeper into this, the next one, we're going to talk about how man actually created life. And we hold them like they are these incredible mastermind explorers, oh my God, well, you know what? They have a seed, they have a womb. They're halfway there. I'll teach you the rest later. It's that simple. Literally that simple. The earth is the womb of all life. The earth is a cell. It has a core, just like an atom. It has a core, and it has an outside electromagnetic field. This is why I always get a kick out of children, even adults, who say, Man, I'd like to be an astronaut. You are an astronaut. 
you are on a vehicle flying thousands of miles an hour through space with the greatest spacesuit ever invented, your skin. And it's that electromagnetic field that protects us as we're flying through space. That electromagnetic field, because the whole universe is electric and we're connected to it, but as the Earth flies around on its rotation, that's why we don't bump into things. Because they all have their own field, and those fields are resisting each other. This is also why meteors are so dangerous. Did you see them falling from the sky? Because they're dead, they have no electromagnetic field. And they can enter our atmosphere. Think about that the next time you think of a cell that is weak. The weaker it gets, the more important it is that the body pulls it into one of our lymph nodes. It's crazy, but it's true. It's very true. Something else I wanted to show you, speaking of seeds, this is something that probably most of us see every single day. And we have no clue. This is a bell pepper. Happens to be a yellow one. Doesn't matter what color. You see the bottom of that? It has four nubs on it, right? One, two, three, and four. This is a female pepper. You see it's plump. It's sweet. It has great nourishment. It's very easy to chew. The skin is not as tough as the one I'm going to show you. And these are great for live dishes like salads and, and uh, putting on a sandwich or something like that because they're softer, sweeter, uh, and nutrient dense. And what are they full of? Seeds. And what does one seed from this give you? Hundreds of seeds. That's the cradle of life. It keeps regenerating itself year after year, season after season. This, and the reason I have an orange one is, doesn't matter what color the bell pepper is, has three bumps. This is a male pepper, and it is tougher, it's a little more bitter, and it holds up better if you're steaming or cooking your peppers. So I just thought I'd put that in there, since we're talking about the cradle of life, this is it right here. Male, female. Tougher, a little more bitter, harder skin, still nutrient dense, still has seeds. Four bumps, get it up here so you can see it. Four bumps, female. You can see it's, it's actually plumper. Okay? More nutrients. Great for salads. I mean, unbelievable how sweet and tender these are. <clears throat> so, this is a, a fennel. And one seed grew a plant that gave us, it must be a thousand seeds. This is just one little sprig of it. Okay? And when that falls to the earth, and it gets what we're going to talk about in the next video. It springs to life. Spring to life. Because now we're getting into the four seasons. And please uh, let me know where you're from. If you have questions, you know, I'll answer them after. Hit that like button. Love if, if you're in that space like I am. I just love everything and everyone because we're all one source energy. And that energy comes from the seed and the womb. And when they connect, they create a cell. They're both cells, they create a cell. That cell divides and divides and divides until it creates you. How is it being destroyed? They're sterilizing everything. And anything that's sterile in nature vanishes. It cannot exist here. 
That's how crazy it is. And that's what's happening. People like Monsanto's and, and Bayer and DuPont and I think there's seven companies that do the uh, GMO foods. <clears throat> what they're doing is you get one crop and the seeds won't reproduce. You, if you eat sterile, especially our children, if they eat sterile, they become sterile. There is no question about that. You eat sterile, you become sterile. And the lineage of your family tree will stop. Science knows this and they play with this every day. They are altering your genes every single day simply by the food you're eating and the liquids you're consuming. This is why organic is so important. Monsanto's is not just creating a seed that will not reproduce, but is using petroleum chemicals to spray the plants that falls on the ground and it kills all the microorganisms. So, this is an organic pepper, but most food that you're buying in the grocery store has three minerals, NPK. Our body needs 86. Well, we're not getting it from that. Now, <clears throat> when you go in a store, all the fruits and veggies look amazing. The fruits aren't, aren't in this so much. They do spray the trees, so there is some of this going on. What they're doing is they're making drug addicts out of the plants. Because the nutrients that are supposed to come from the ground isn't coming from the ground. It's being sprayed on top. And what does it make? It makes a beautiful looking plant that isn't strong enough to protect itself. That's why they have to use pesticides, herbicides, all these different sides, which means, it means that they're not strong enough to fend off their enemies. So they have to spray to, to protect the plant. Then we eat that. And we look good, but we are unable to really protect ourselves from the microorganisms that live inside us that give us an overgrowth of bad bacteria because we're not strong enough to fend that off. That's why live liquids are so important for our bodies. We get congested. We get weak on a cellular level. We want to make sure that we get those cells hydrated, that we get the proper salt. Not too much, not too little, but we sweat out a lot of salt every single day and our body doesn't manufacture salt. And we do not want table salt. This is something about your doctor. Your doctor says you need to go on a salt-free diet. From industrialized table salt, yes, you do. But from Himalayan salt, uh, Celtic salt, all these different salts that have 80, 86 minerals in them, those are the salts you want. Those are the salts that help bring the nutrients into the cell. The other ones are not doing that. Jack Lane had one of the best quotes I ever heard. If man makes it, don't eat it. <laughs> Which is almost impossible to do these days, but he's right. If man makes it, don't eat it. Now, how do we build a better, stronger, more nourishing plant? The soil, the microorganisms. Everything that we do is to build a foundation that when the plant grows, it gets what it needs, you won't have to use pesticides. You won't have to use any of that stuff because the plant will be strong enough to fend off anything that comes along. Now you may get a nick or two here and there, but still, 
you know, and, and you're not planting. Nowhere in nature does nature plant a thousand acres of corn or a thousand acres of broccoli or 10,000 acres of whatever, right? Because bugs will grow to the size of their food chain. So when you get a large area like that, they're swarming in. And they're telling their, all their buddies, come over here, the food is great. And then they get sprayed. Which brings us to another thing. And you got to remember, this is, these bugs, they're us. So why do they have to keep increasing the toxicity of the spray every year? Because the bugs are adjusting to them. And they have to make it stronger to kill them. When we consume something, our body is reading that. Our body is really smart. So it's reading all this stuff and it's trying to eliminate it, but it gets congested. Then it starts to have trouble. But only when it starts to get congested. That's when you start getting like a demer in your feet, and your legs, or you start having heart palpitations, which is an autonomic nerve deal. The autonomic nerve seat is in your gut. So when you start having digestive issues, you can have dizzy spells, you can have fainting, uh, shortness of breath, heart palpitations, so many things, it's all digestion. And what happens when they spray bugs? Their stomachs explode. And what are we experiencing as a nation? Bloated stomachs. Bloated everything. Right? We're swelling inside. And our body pressure, which is supposed to be about 14.3 PSI, increases. So our heart has to work harder. And as it's working harder, our blood pressure goes up because it's trying to drive it through the body because everything's getting tight and, and dense. Because there's no hydration and the swelling, the inflammation. That all comes from acid. So every seed needs a different pH. Well, our bodies are no different. The balance there is very small, very small, between you and me or your neighbor or your siblings or your parents. It doesn't matter what it is. They're going to vary a little bit. So is the blood pressure. Do you know that blood pressure is not universal around the world? It's not the same all the way around the world. They're trying to get it to be the same. But it's not. It never has been. We have a set of numbers that we use. And we're expected to follow that. And we are given so many drugs to try and balance that out. We don't need drugs to balance things out. We do not have a drug shortage. What we have is a nutrition hydration shortage. And when we give our body what it needs, it will seek its own balance because that's what it does. And it does it through the 13 channels of elimination. And as they clog, especially as the acids build in the body and the inflammation comes up, it goes into your head, you can lose your sense of taste, smell, sight, hearing. Okay? Headaches, pressure headaches, migraines. It just goes on and on. Well, as above, so below. Your whole system below, between your urinary tract, your digestive tract, maybe your respiration, is all congested. And that all needs to move, and that has to go out through the colon and the kidneys. And of course your third kidney, I, I go over this in almost every video, but your third kidney is your skin. And it's the largest eliminative organ. It's also the largest organ that absorbs whatever's around it. So it's very important to remember when you touch something, your body is picking that up and it's going through your skin. It doesn't matter if it's metal, it doesn't dust, paint, doesn't matter. It's it's gonna absorb some of that if you touch it. 
Even if you smell it, if you can smell it, it's already in your body. So, as individuals and as a nation, to protect our children, we need to think more like the Native Americans, which I happen to be one, and I'm very proud of that. Seven generations out. What I do today, I'm thinking seven generations out. What can I do right now in this moment to make sure that our children, seven generations from me, are going to have a healthy world to live in? I'm going to take care of the soil. I'm going to give back to the earth. We have compost here. We have worm farms here. And the compost goes there or it goes out in the compost, even in the winter, because it will all mix. And then where's it go? It goes in the garden to feed the plants. And the plants take that nutrients up because of the microorganisms down there working their magic, right? And the worms fertilizing and breaking down the soil, especially the rock stuff, so that they can get those minerals up through the plant and into the greatest, purest, water and minerals you can put in your body. And that comes in the form of fruits, berries, and melons. And vegetables. That's how important it is. You take care of the ground, the ground will take care of the plant, the plant will give you the greatest food for your body. And that food will heal your body on a cellular level. We're told not to uh, many seeds like apple seeds. Oh, you don't eat apple seeds. Those things are poison. Yeah, if you eat two pounds at a time, well, you're not going to. These seeds in these things are life. And it's incredibly important that we have seeds, whether that's hemp seed, flax seed, uh, there's so many uh, sunflower seeds. Uh, we make a beautiful, and we may do a video on that. We make a beautiful mock tuna that tastes just like tuna. It has a great consistency, made from sunflower seeds. There's a little more to it than that, but still. And we have it all the time. And if it sits overnight, it's even better the next day. So we're going to start doing some raw uh, food recipes, and we're actually going to make them so you can see them. And you'll know how to make them. The recipes and everything will be in the description below uh, when we do those. Whether we're going to do them live or not, I don't know if we're good enough to do that. <laughs> but, hey, we may try it a couple times. <clears throat> As you know, when I do things, they're not always perfect. But perfect doesn't get the information out. Perfect doesn't allow you to be the explorer that you need to be to learn. Mistakes are how we learn. And I'm all for that. You know, I, and many of you know this, I grew up not being able to read or write. And at 49, after having a very successful business, I took six years off, lived in my van, taught myself to read and write, wrote my first book, Prisoners of Our Own Beliefs. And I'm working on other books now, and obviously I do a lot of writing, because uh, hopefully uh, many of you have read my Thought of the Day or Health Behind the Curtain. And there are more things coming. So I'm really happy that people are getting something out of that. Because I know what it's like to be out there with no one to help you. No one has an answer. Well, I said if I ever figured it out, I'd share it with the world. And here I am, sharing it with as many people. And I hope that you will share it with other people that you love and are concerned about. To help them understand that we are the earth. Every living cell is a duplicate of the master cell. And that master cell is Mother Earth. 
Earth is a cell, and we are all its children. Every living thing. And every living thing out there is a container for water, and it must have nutrients. Proper nutrients and hydration to stay healthy, alive, vibrant, until its cycle is done. In farming, farmers are taught now to fertilize in the spring. Nature doesn't fertilize in the spring. Who waters the forest? It does everything itself. Matter of fact, you can't stop it. You can't keep it from creeping in your yard. It's a constant job. And there are tons of poisons out there to kill everything that comes around you. Well, those plants that are growing in that tough soil, like dandelion and plantain and, and uh, St. John's wort and uh, milkweed, and these are amazing for your body. These are medicines. And we're going out and we're spraying them to kill them. And their job in nature is to find bad soil and grow in it to bring nutrients back into that soil. And it's wild. Wild like crazy, wild, and, and it's wild in nature. We don't have to plant these. Every year we're out there trying to kill them to get rid of them. Well, most of America is. I'm out there eating them. Pick and eat. You ever had the yellow part of a dandelion, the little blossom on top? They are sweet and delicious and unbelievable for your body. The whole plant, the stem, the leaves, the roots, the whole thing, extremely beneficial. In fact, dandelion, and for those that don't know, at my YouTube channel, Gary Parent, there are over 340 videos there to watch for free. And I show you tea recipes to help different parts of your body. Because herbs are organ and gland specific. So it's really important to understand what those herbs are and what they're good for. But dandelion is one of the most powerful herbs I've ever found. Marshmallow root, echinacea, these are amazing herbs. So get a hold of some of this stuff if you can. Ginkgo. We have ginkgo trees growing all over uh, Providence. So we go out and we ask the tree if we can have a leaf. And I chew on that while I'm walking. Amazing plant. And what does it do? Upper cirque, brain, and nerve. It increases circulation in head, hands, and feet. Very important. Very important herb. Skull cap increases circulation, head, hands, and feet, but it also reduces pain associated with that. So it's extremely important that we understand we don't have a drug shortage, we have a hydration nutrient shortage. I wish I could uh, see some of the stuff that's going by and I, I love each and every one of you. I am so proud to and honored to be able to share all this information with you. And we will go over many of these things. But if you want, you are not a victim of your genes. If science can alter your genes, you can alter your genes. If they get weak generationally, we can make them stronger generationally. How do we do that? Enrich the soil, help the plants, the plants give us exactly what we need, we consume that, we find our balance, and we're rocking and rolling. We are ready to go. It's that simple. So I think this is pretty short, but I hope you found this helpful. And remember, I love you all, and Check me out on uh, YouTube, 
said, I have over 340 videos over there. And I'll be more doing more tea videos. I don't know if we'll do those live. I feel like I could do those live, but they're pretty, I wouldn't say they're pretty long, but. Uh, but they're very informational. Because there's no reason why you can't buy your tea bulk. I can make it for you and send it to you. I would love to do that. And just hope that through these conversations that we're having or through this program right here, that you are able to find your balance. That you are able to sift through all the half-truths. Is red meat good for you or is it bad for you? Is coffee good for you or is coffee bad for you? These are all the chaotic things that are brought down through the media that confuse us, so we don't know what to do. We'll always go back to the cell. The cell is simple. We have a seed, we have a womb. We need hydration and nutrition. That's it. That's it. You learn how to do that, your body will take care of everything else, all its own. Mind-blowing, I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's nature. It's how it works. You get an overgrowth of bad bacteria, it's because the, the strong bacteria got weak. You learn how to strengthen that, good bacteria, and it will eliminate the bad bacteria all on its own. And it's all by what you're consuming. Live food, live body. Dead food, dead body. So, I... I I just want to say thank you to everybody for uh, tuning in and listening. It is incredible to be here. You know, I get, I get, I call it information. I get downloads of information. Sometimes it'll come to me that fast. I'll have four or five things set up that I want to talk about. And when I turn the camera on, something new comes in. And I talk about that. Because I, I don't have a choice. It came to me. I have to share it. So hopefully you found this helpful. And remember, four nubs is a female. Sweet, tender, delicious, nutritious, great for live foods. And this is a male pepper. It doesn't matter what color it is either. Red, green, doesn't matter. Three is a little more bitter. It'll hold up better when you cook it. It won't turn to mush. This will turn to mush. And it seasons things well. So, again, hope you found this helpful. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay? Love you guys. See you later.